Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Sorry for the delay in getting a new video out, but I've been busy and I was able to piece this one together and I hope you will all enjoy it. Today we've got a very special treat. The 1 to 20th scale Acrocanthosaurus from Lu Fangshan. This incredible model was sculpted by Lu, who was born and raised in Taiwan. Like most of us, Lu's love for dinosaurs and prehistoric life started when he discovered his first dinosaur books at the tender age of 5. Lu first began building dinosaur models after the first Jurassic Park movie hit theaters in 1993. At the time, dinosaur models were next to impossible to find in Taiwan. He started sculpting his own work with resin putty in 2004, but his early work was never completed. He began seriously working on dinosaur sculpts in 2012, all while managing a full-time job at an insurance company. But he soon realized he didn't have enough time for his customers, so he quit his insurance job and put everything into his modeling career. He spent countless hours studying dinosaur models he collected from other artists, and watching modern animals as well. After completing his African elephant and some rhinos, it was none other than the infamous paleo artist Shane Folks who began guiding Lou and providing tips on how to improve his sculpting. Shane shared many of the techniques and experiences he had, and today, Lou produces beautiful, scientifically accurate dinosaurs and prehistoric models. I'm so grateful to have this incredible kit in my collection. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at Lou's 1 to 20th scale Acrocanthosaurus. This kit comes in five pieces. We'll start with the main body, which surprisingly is casted as one piece with the legs. The details are amazing. The scales are cleanly sculpted, and the top half of the body is adorned with osteoderms that kind of remind me of a crocodile. Lou has sculpted in beautiful line details where the skin would typically bunch up. This adds to the overall feel of the model, making it very lifelike. The head comes in two parts, a lower and upper jaw. This model is originally to be assembled with a closed mouth look, but I decided to take a chance and modify it to have an open mouth. I start with getting some skin impressions with Sculpey, which I'll bake in the oven for about 15 minutes to solidify. I then proceed to cut off a chunk of the neck in order to modify the mouth. Look at that mess! Next, I glue the top half of the head onto the body. I then use a two-part epoxy to attach the lower jaw, and sculpt in between the gaps. This is my very first time attempting anything like this. While the lower jaw is drying, I decided to glue on the arms. I use small pieces of epoxy sculpt to fill in the gaps, and to block in the overall shape I'd like around the neck. I use a combination of small rubber brushes and the skin impressions I took earlier to sculpt in the details. Here, I'm sculpting in some line details for the skin between the upper and lower jaw. Overall, I think I did a pretty decent job in customizing the jaw. For the paint scheme, I decided to use the pattern shown on the Tyrannosaurus Rex from Prehistoric Kingdom, but I'm going to be switching up some of the colors using more browns and yellows. So, we'll see how it turns out. After I've primed the model in a grey, I cover the entire model in a beige. Alright, here I'm adding some pale grey wash to the entire model to seep into the cracks and really bring out that detail. And here's a shot of the model after we've applied the grey wash. Next, we're going to bring out those details by hitting the entire model with a dry brush of that light beige. Up 
Up next, we're going back to the airbrush and I'm using a yellow ochre to create the countershaded look. Since we don't really know what color Acrocanthosaurus was, feel free to apply the countershaded color as high or low on the model as you'd like. Here I'm adding some yellow ochre to the head, just kind of freestyling it, having fun. I'm adding a bit to the bottom jaw as well, just to make it a bit more interesting. After the yellow ochre has dried, I'm adding some brown. I believe this is USA Brown. And I'm leaving a little bit of the yellow ochre peeking through. Uh, so it's just adding another layer of counter shade to it. Just adding the brown where I feel like it sits well. Acrocanthosaurus has to be one of my favorite dinosaurs. It has all the attributes to make it awesome. It was a large carcharodontosaurid theropod with high spines and a killer skull. What's not to like? Here is a quick shot of our model so far, and in my opinion, I think he's looking pretty good so far. We'll take a little break from the airbrush, and we're going to hit all the spikes along the back with an off-white. Uh, this off-white is watered down a bit, and after it's dried, I'm going to add that gray wash to all the spikes as well. This kind of adds a little bit of depth and tone to all the spikes along the back. Up next, I go back to the airbrush with a transparent brown from Createx. I'm just hitting that top layer and hitting the base of the spikes as well to add a bit of color to it. I'm using the same brown to hit various areas of the model just to add some different tones and make it look a bit more realistic. I'd like to thank you for watching this far. If you're enjoying this video and if you think it's worth it, please consider liking and subscribing as it would really help out the channel. Here I'm adding that same transparent Createx brown to the head, again to just make it a bit more interesting. And the final layer of brown is a sapia that I'm running along the top edges, hitting the spikes and just adding it kind of randomly to, to create some various tones along the model and darkening some areas and leaving some areas as well. All right, here comes the tricky part. I am using a brown black and my brush to start blocking in the patterns on the model. And I'm following the prehistoric kingdom design as close as I can, but I'm also freestyling a bit to make it a bit unique. This is the first time I'm doing such an elaborate design on a model and I was a bit scared to, to undertake it to be quite honest. Sometimes, well I guess pretty much every time I paint a model, it never turns out the way I wanted it to look like. Uh, I guess I have really high expectations and as I'm painting it, it's not exactly the way I want it to look. But a lot of times I just kind of persevere through it, keep going, modify things, change things where I think uh, it might look better and ultimately it'll turn out looking pretty decent. Here I'm following the skin folds to add the patterns on the legs and as I reach the tail I water down the paint even more so it's a bit more transparent and kind of fades out to the end of the tail. I think the trickiest part about doing a complex pattern is that you have to repeat the process on the other side and make it look relatively pretty much the same uh, or else the model will look off. A quick tip would be to take a photo of the side you painted, flip it and then use that photo as reference while painting the other side. Now adding the pattern to the head was super nerve wracking. I like the counter shaded look I, it had so far, I almost wanted to stop there, but uh, it would look off with the pattern all over the body, so I just started blocking in the pattern uh, with watered down brown black and adding a little bit at a time, taking breaks, kind of reflecting back on the design, does it look good, do I want to change anything, and I'm just kind of following the prehistoric kingdom design, but like I said, I'm also freestyling a bit here. Here's a quick shot of the head with the pattern blocked in so far. After I blocked in the pattern, I felt it looked off. It was too, too many lines. It looked too uh, even, I, I guess. So I went back and I thickened some of the lines. I connected some of the lines. I just made things a bit more random. 
and uh, less stripey. And I felt it worked a lot better. So this right here is all just kind of freestyle, just thickening some of the lines that I felt like needed some thickening, uh, connecting some of the lines where it's when it was too stripey. And uh, like I said, I think it turned out a lot better. If I had to do this all over again, I think I would have watered down the brown black a bit more to make it slightly more transparent and not so thick. Uh, another thought was to use uh, an airbrush to, to block in the patterns as well, but I, I just don't feel I'm skilled enough with an airbrush to do that yet. But uh, yeah, it was uh, a unique process. I learned a lot during this, and uh, that's the that's the key when painting dinosaur models, right? You're not going to be great right off the bat. It's an ongoing process where you're going to learn new things and improve as you go along. Up next, I'm going to add some burnt umber oil paint and mix it with some paint thinner to create a wash. And I'm going to apply this wash to the entire top side of the model. And what that will do is seep into the cracks, as you can see here, all the skin folds and the scales are start just start popping a bit more. And it's also darkening that top side a bit and bringing the colors together, adding a bit of warmth and realism to the model. This is quite a fun step, adding the wash. I just really enjoy watching the, the ink kind of seep through the cracks and really bring out that detail. All right, up next I'm mixing more oil paints to create a light gray and mixing it with some thinner to create another wash. And this will be applied to the underbelly or where the, the beige is pretty much. And it'll seep into the cracks and bring all the colors together as well. After taking a couple days break, I'm going back to the model and working with my brush on the head. And I'm adding various tones of gray to the face and mostly the orbital bone above the eye and across the top of the head, almost bringing out some unique design as a display structure for the Acrocanthosaurus. And then I'm just working in some, some gray tones on random scales on the face, just to make it a lot more interesting. Then I go in with various tones of brown and I'm picking out random scales on the face and along the model, basically to make it look a bit more realistic, almost like a little freckle aspect to the model and yeah this part's really fun because you're just adding details where you think they belong there's there's no rules here just have fun with it the same rules apply to the underside of the model but really I'm using uh, various tones of gray here and just picking out random scales and just having fun with it making it look unique and uh, like it's a real animal with various tones of scales along its body and finally, the same thing, I'm adding various tones of brown and black to the pattern. Up next, I'm adding some pink to the mouth as a base coat. And I want to make sure I hit all the spots within the mouth, all the crevices and the side of the mouth as well. I have no idea why I'm using a dry brush for this. Here's a quick shot of the base coat for the mouth. And then I hit a flesh wash on the entire mouth. Again, this is gonna seep into the cracks and bring out those line details and the details within the mouth, creating some shadows under the tongue. I felt the side of the mouth looked a bit too gummy. So I added some yellow ochre and browns to kind of blend things back together and make it look more natural. I then use an off-white to paint all the teeth and I wanna make sure I hit the inside teeth as well. And then after that's dried, I use a sapia wash to darken the teeth and again, bring out some of those details. I then use that same off-white to paint the toenails and the claws. This part's relatively easy. You just want to make sure you don't hit the skin and ruin up the patterns that you've created. I then use the gray wash to hit all the nails and the claws as well, again to add some detail and depth to it. And then I use a brown and a gray to add to the toenails and claws to make them look a bit dirtier, like they've been worn out a bit, they've been walking around. And my favorite part, adding the eye. So I start with a dark brown. And then I start with a darker yellow and work my way up to a lighter yellow. And then finally, 
I will add the black pupil and using a, a toothpick, I had a little white eye catch there. After that's dried, I will gloss the eye and also gloss the mouth. And I also thought to make the model a bit unique, I was gonna add that same gloss to all the spikes along the back and the toe and claw nails. This step is hard to catch on camera. It looks like I'm just hitting these spikes with nothing, but uh, I promise you there's a gloss finish there. And here is our finished Acrocanthosaurus from Lu Fang Shan. Wow, what a joy it was to paint this. This is an absolutely fantastic model. If you're looking to get one yourself, I've left Lou's website and email in the description below. It's a super easy model to assemble, it balances very well, and will stand out in any dinosaur collection. I'm fairly happy with how my paint job turned out. There's a few things that I do differently, but hey, we live and we learn, right? I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm constantly thinking of new content I want to put together, but I gotta stop daydreaming and start creating. I had a lot of fun putting this video together. I had it sitting on my to-do list for a long time and I'm glad it's finally here. I appreciate all of you for staying to the end. Please like, comment, and subscribe and I will do my best to get you some new content as soon as I can. Take it easy guys.